on the 29th of April 2013, that's just over four years ago, my father Mohammed Salim was leaving the mosque around 10 past 10 p.m. and he was followed home by a far-right neo-Nazi terrorist. He followed my father home on the road we have lived on for over 30 years and stabbed him to death. And then he went on a bombing campaign for three months and put bombs outside three mosques in the West Midlands. This was one of the biggest acts of terrorism in the UK, yet today many people don't know about it. The media was quite silent on it. In comparison to Lee Rigby's death, he was murdered three weeks after my father's brutal murder. And we saw Theresa May go out with the Cobra meetings. Mosques had to condemn the attack, but we didn't have any of this. We had basically a deafening silence. I remember sitting in my flat and when I heard the news that my father was brutally stabbed, my second oldest sister called me and said, Dad's been stabbed. And then within minutes, my older sister called me and said, Dad's dead. And I just could not believe it. I ran to the station, you know, I was literally not even properly dressed to meet my sister and we drove to Birmingham and we got to the hospital when the surgeon described the injuries and he'd never seen such horrifying injury, injuries on an elderly man, you know, he completely broke our heart. You just don't expect this to happen on a road where you've lived all your life. But my father didn't deserve this. He was a British citizen. He loved and respected this country and to literally die on our doorstep. I mean, we have to walk past it every day. For my mom, this is traumatic. Natural death you can deal with, but when someone's brutally stabs your father at 82 years old, it's just, I cannot accept that. I cannot accept that. And that's why I campaign, because I don't want this to happen to anyone else. Things have uh, sadly got worse. Islamophobia is rife. It's burning through the world right now. Pablo Lapshin, who murdered my father, read a lot of anti-Muslim media. This is what spewed his hatred. We have to look at what the media does, the rhetoric it pushes out against Muslims on a daily basis. Trevor Kavanagh's piece for The Sun saying there is a Muslim problem. This article will lead to more Islamophobic attacks and murders on our street because what he's done here, he's used the word the Muslim problem. Do you remember from Hitler's handbook, the Jewish problem? We're seeing echoes of the 1930s here when Muslims are now treated in the same way as the Jews were and the rise of fascism in the States is very dangerous and we can't let that happen here in the UK. We need to challenge Trevor Kavanagh, we need to challenge Sarah Champion as well. Recent articles in regards to the grooming scandal which is demonising all Pakistani men as rapists. My father was a Pakistani, my family is Pakistani, my brothers are Pakistani. How can you say all Muslim men are rapists? And we need to challenge every single one of these people that is demonising Muslims on a daily basis because this is going to have an effect on the future generations to come. Children don't know hate unless they see hate. But they learn from what they see. And what we are seeing today in schools, 69% increase in Islamophobic bullying. My father would want all his children and his grandchildren to have a world where everyone's united as one, everyone talks to each other, to accept people of all religions, respect one another, live in unity, live in peace. If you don't understand anything about anyone, just ask them questions, just talk to people. Don't hate someone who you don't know anything about. Education is key, and that's what my father always said, education is key and knowledge is power. Thank you.